Hi Divine Rebels, Bohemia with Bohemian Stars and Ocean Heart Readings, and I am very excited to be doing another Ancestor reading, Ancestor messages for everyone here. We have our wonderful Skull fam here. <laughs> um, there's a lot of cards that came through, the Ancestors were wonderful. So just a little bit on how I do these readings. Whenever I do collective readings that I am channeling in Ancestors, Guides, Angels, things of that nature, what I do is I sit and I, you know, get in the space with them and I, until I feel that connection and I ask them to group up with those with the most similar energy and messages so that they can most authentically pass that on to you guys because it can become very difficult if you have you know on one message you have all these different people trying to come through in different vibrations so I try to get them to kind of get in line with okay who has a similar message you know who has a similar um, kind of identification and things like that so it can be the most cohesive for um, the viewers and then they you know it's their job to get you here to see the video to lead you to click so if you are here then there is a message here for you really you know sit until you feel their their guidance of which one to choose and your intuition is aligned um, number one we have the um, crystal enclosed skull and this one actually has little um, bat glitters and stuff in it um, number two, we have the sugar skull. This is a different one than the one that was in the other reading. Um, there was another little black skull, but it didn't have as much detail. Number three, I love is this um, earring, sugar skull earring. And number four is, I just call it my orange skull because it's all glittery and orange. And do you know how many people think that that's a real skull and they ask me if I decorated it? <laughs> and I'm like, what? Gee, I'm witchy, but gee, no, I did not take a real school and decorate it. Have you heard of a craft store <laughs> uh, on sale after Halloween? Okay. Um, so yes, here's our options. One, two, three, four. All the links will be down below. Timestamps. I put in song links and there was one group of ancestors that brought in songs and y'all get ready. Okay. Get ready. Um, because what, some of y'all, they were trip. They were so fun. And, um, decks will be linked below and all of that. Please go ahead and leave your, you know, feedback, your comments and things down below. And I appreciate you being here and we'll get into it right now. Move these to the side. Excuse me. Okay. For those of you that chose option one, let's get into it. You have dance, which is like the chariot. You have zombie, which is the hangman. You have the six of cups reverse. You have the High Priestess, so definitely like we have a lot of Cancer and Pisces energy and Scorpio, so water signs right off the bat. You have the Sun, so it could also be some Leo energy here. Sorry, I'm trying to reach over here and get all of your cards. You have a lot of cards. We have the Ace of Swords reversed, the Six of Cups reversed again, so you got it twice from two decks. Um, we have the Queen of Wands. Okay, this ancestor is so fun. We have Ziggurat of Ur. Bluebeard, Taboos. The Frog Prince, Intimacy. Happiness is a choice I make. The Well of Weird. And I'll zoom out here so you can see. I'm just trying to see how we can get all of this. All this information my altar just keeps growing i need to clear it off i just keep adding stones and things to it um we got 16 from this deck um we have reconciliation we have the queen ghost which is regret and we have the lady um enjoy growth and reap rewards okay <laughs> So a lot of information here. So you guys definitely had a strong ancestor that came through. Your guys's was the fun one. You are actually going to have some song links down. I've even heard this answer. I've had this reading waiting and I have to, of course, wait until the timing and, you know, till everything lines up with electronics and stuff to do the videos. And this, they were just reminding me, kept having like these songs, like singing these songs. And I was like, I know, I know I'm going to get it um, for you. So you have a lot of messages here. Um, about 
I'm like, what, where should we start? Let's just dive in. Let's just dive in. They have a bold personality. So a lot of you who chose this, you have, you see how we have queen and the queen of staffs and the lady here, and we have dance and all of this fiery energy. This is about, um, reclaiming yourself sexually and reclaiming your own body. Um, we, you had a very strong energy of, um, having ancestors that were in drag and that were transgender that came through. And it was, amazing so there's two songs by like Haley 47 um, one of them is called post that is about posing for music or pictures and stuff and the other one is attitude and those were the songs they're songs you can vogue to okay so I will have those linked down below watch them have a good time they literally are talking about like let go open up um you know let loose dance more you know give into music and connect i feel like when they were very <laughs> they were very um dynamic with their personality very fiery vivacious you know we have aries and leo energy here could be a little sagittarian energy and the message that they were giving is that they were around more when you were younger and then at a certain point they were just like mm, this child ain't listening to me so they just like kind of <laughs> went and did their own thing for a while um but they definitely are saying they their message is that they want you to live fully in yourself some of you also have a similar life path with with them where you need to come out yourself you need to embrace you need to embrace who you are and they don't want you to live with regrets they don't want you to live not being able to be your full-fledged self and live out loud so they're talking about a lot of family dynamics and intimacy issues where there could be where you have might uh, might have gone through um having abusive partners or having some difficulties in your um, sexual life or having, um, you know, being a survivor of certain things and just not felt that you could really live your truth and that you could find intimacy with others. And some of you have been keeping a lot of secrets and holding a lot in and that's too much for you. And it's almost like they're saying you need to empty your childhood and get back to, um, that that origins the feelings of who you are re irregardless or regardless of um everybody around what is your true story what is your authenticity re reconcile yourself and it's like they are there consoling you and being you know with you and connecting with you to be empowered like they're just like you need to do you happiness is a choice you make and they're like if i could make it through the difficult time that I had not being able to as fully express as I wanted to like you know you have to do it as much as you can you know free yourself free yourself free yourself is the energy be in loving relationships command respect from others you know be as dynamic as you can enjoy growth reap the rewards like look at this um Yes, and they have a lot of wisdom. I didn't realize that, that she, I never noticed she was holding the purple calla lilies before, um, which is a sign of wisdom. I actually gave those to one of my um, elders before and she, before her transition. So, um, yes, they can, they're, they're a flower of really having a lot of wisdom. So this person, even though they come off very young, vivacious, they're always stirring things up, you know, they really resonate with feminine energy and but they're like in the fiery sort of it, you know, it's like the feminine sun goddesses or something. They also are nurturing and they also really, um, re like they're knowledgeable. You can trust them to have knowledge. So if they're telling you to go out and party and to let loose, it's because that is edifying for your soul journey and it's part of claiming yourself. Now you have the well of weird here, which is under the world tree. And that is having like the deep nurturing reserves in yourself that need to be freed and claimed because a lot of you have closed down emotionally like a lot you've closed down creatively you feel like you're kind of trapped and you can't be your own true self and that others are influencing that and kind of pulling the strings of who you get to be um you might feel like you are limited and not able to fully connect to your um soul gifts your spirit gifts and they're just like come on come out into the sunlight like you know and for some of you it is like a um uh like a ceremony like having to rebirth yourself or having to really cut cords or you know it's like a big transition to move into like this empowerment and to just let loose and let go 
um, from things that have been hindering you for a very, very long time. And some of you have been stuck on like other people's opinion or their closure or them just, I just want to get the story straight of what really happened. And this, you know, you see how many times this ancestor who's coming through is just like, no, like your real family is going to have your back no matter what's been gone on they're going to look out for you they're going to protect you and keep you safe and anyone who is not doing that like they're for the birds you need to go and get your um uh your freedom and in doing that and a lot of this too is about your sexual health because um over here with this card with ishtar when she was underground and was um you know basically made to uh, like derobe and things that um you know and this whole thing that happened and then so up on earth people like stopped having um sex and like stopped you know and enjoying their bodies and things and then when she came back up it was like a rebirth of that so it's like if you are hidden or you know being disrespected and not being held as sacred in your physical body if you're not allowed to make the rules and the terms for your sick your um yeah your sexual self and your physical body like those are not the right people to be around i feel like whatever your expression is i'm i'm seeing a lot of queer people of being gender queer non-binary the whole spectrum here um you know a lot of you will be picking this reading as well from the whole lgbtq plus um community and you are seeing this common ancestor that's here um and even if you are you know um heterosexual sexual cisgender um and you uh like are trying to see how this information fits for you i feel like they're just like well in that case they're like it should definitely be easy for you because <laughs> if i could do me if i could embrace myself and live out loud and find a way to have joy and happiness and not let people steal who i am then what are you doing what are you doing boo um so there and it, it's not any like belittlement that it's not difficult to do that sometimes but it's just like is there any other choice to make besides being happy and being who you are like it's an encouragement it is like you know for who for who are you sacrificing your spirit sacrificing just your your most natural mode of being like it's you have to have joy in life you have to um you know communicate again they don't want you to be a ghost that's end up stuck here with regret all right and for those of you who are worried this card is about a creator who um created everything you know and then basically lets the humans do their thing and they go and they like have their own journey that they're doing um through the cosmos and things and they'll send rain and stuff every so often just to have that reminder of connecting and that they were here and they're the ones who created but it's not like it's a totally different story than like you see in um kind of the monotheistic religions where it's like you're doomed and i'm watching you and if you don't please me and if you use your body wrong and da 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 da, da. like obviously there are certain moral compasses that we all innately know like don't kill each other don't hurt children like there's some you know don't violate each other's boundaries but as far as just living within yourself and expressing who you are i feel like some of you um this is to tell you about your spiritual gifts some of you it's to tell you about your sexual life or your orientation or how you just resonate in your body and use your own body um and just you know some of you it, it can even be like you want to have a more creative like counterculture life and you just feel like you know they will really in a society make you feel like that's wrong like you're a bad person like how is that possible so this ancestor is just really coming through like no i want you to be who you are i accept you as who you are and if you haven't heard it from anyone else in the family i'm letting it be known here okay there is um powerful uh, magical abilities here but this is like um almost like performance art like where you you weave your magic on stage you weave your magic by who you are and what you do and what you wear like letting your spirit out of itself is is your magic it's your moves um it's very an active energy you know 
it's the difference between like um, an actor behind the scenes that does it on film and someone who is captivating the audience on stage and working the crowds and just pulling in that energy in real time and putting it out so you have so much energy to draw from you come from you know this amazing legacy of love and confidence and empowerment and um, surviving through struggles and um, not letting other people's fears or their uh, big bigotry or any of that squelch or diminish who you can be that is part of your legacy and so they just want you to be very empowered and to feel like a badass and to put on a little attitude <laughs> when you need to okay and to go ahead and take your pictures enjoy your body enjoy how you look you know do what makes you look happy with your look and um you know again if you're not hurting another human being th what, what's the problem what what is the problem right so they're like look I want to see you healthy. I want to see you happy. I want you to see, I want to see your selfies where you're feeling good about yourself. I want to see you radiating your own, you know, strong solar, solar plexus chakra where you're confident. Um, they're going to come in and teach you how to be bad, you know, in all the right ways. Um, so there is that that's the key that's the key so they're like we're they're green lighting you to move on to happiness you have the chariot you have the sun the high priestess you know um very beautiful energies if you guys have been wanting a career in the arts or like theater or something um I mean, they will help you get there. This is the ancestor to do it, Be definitely. I think that they did this themselves. They were extremely theatrical <laughs> in their life. So I'm seeing um, like muses, I'm seeing dancers, I'm seeing uh, people behind the scenes, like in the recording booth. I'm seeing people, maybe you've given up your dream of writing and they're like, you tell your story. If you do not tell it, they will stamp you out. You cannot wait for someone to give you a platform. You have to go grab a platform yourself and spill that out. And if you do have any privilege this lifetime, they are like, if you don't use that, you don't understand what we've had to go through um, for you to have the, the, the stage that you do have and the opportunities you do. And they're not saying it to shame you. They're saying, look, you, you better use that. You better work. <laughs> All right, so um, hopefully this connected with you and you know that this ancestor is here, that deep well, and this talks about the re reciprocity, you know, we feed the, the world tree, the world tree feeds us, we um, connect with our an ancestors and they connect with us and we both have healing and validation. And so this communication is coming down, they're going to keep on giving you guidance and um, messages and they're very present with you and they just want you to be happy and to be free so I hope you like this um, it was su such a pleasure to channel this so so much fun to channel this reading and I really appreciate you tuning in number ones all right <laughs> all these cards really <laughs> okay all right what's number two this one for those of you that chose number two we have the um this is like the queen of wands we have the emperor is that yeah the emperor we have the five of pentacles the Seven of Pentacles reversed, the Knight of Swords, oh, like all these decks don't have the traditional name on them, so I'm like, which one? The Knight of uh, Pentacles, a lot of people, Five of Wands reversed, Two of Swords, we have Mount Fuji, Snow White and Rose Red, Soul. We have number 13, which has an elk on it, Pilgrimage, the Seer, See Beyond the Current Situation, and the Mummy, Change. 
Okay, and we have two message cards, so we'll save those for a moment. Like, get all this going. So you guys have definitely been through a lot of, like, turmoil. I feel like you've just gone through so many friendships and relationships and disappointment. Um, some, some of you have tried to handle this by pulling away from the world and just kind of getting out of its way. Others of you have, um, you know, whether some of you did it proactively and some of you did it by like hiding. So for some of you, it was like, okay, let me go away on a pilgrimage. And this is, has a monk, um, energy in this card and let me figure things out. Some of you, it was by hiding. Um, that you went and tried to figure things out. And even still, I see some people who have been really fighting the system. Because we have the Emperor, and then we have someone facing off with literally a police barricade. And we have the Five of Wands reverse here, and she's like choking a snake. So you guys have, we have the Two of Swords here, which is kind of more actively like a fight than most cards um, with the Two of Swords. So you guys have been really fighting a lot of battles. You've been um, trying to take down things that should not be... Um, and kind of this card talks about like this doorway here, it separates the sacred world from like the mundane or profane world. And so for you, I think you've been trying to like make those boundaries in this realm and in your life and like get rid of the bullshit. But you know, it's like first you try to address it. Um, and then you, if you can't, then you try to go and be spiritual or some of you are the other way around. First you try to go and like, you know, meditate and just let the situation work itself out. And when it doesn't, you're like, okay, now I'm gangbusters. <laughs> um, so this is a card about, you know, the fact that you still have patience and you have such loyalty. Like you really want to bring positive change to the world and to your life and your family. Um, the elk here is about so much, is, is, is about that. It's like through the long winter, um, really waiting, tending to your responsibilities. And others might not see that. They might feel like, oh, well, you're just like... You know, why are you so angry? Why, you know, why are you all over the place? What's going on? And you're like, because things aren't right. Like, we need to address things. We need to make changes. And who's helping me do that? Like, are any of you helping me do that? Now, for a lot of you, you have um, kind of a grandmothery or even more like an aunt kind of energy that's here that's present that is wanting to console you as far as, yeah, it could be like a mother's sister for some of you or a grandmother's sister. Um... But the overall energy is what, like, letting you know that you are necessary out in the greater world. We have two sun gods that are females, and I actually mentioned that on the last reading. Um, we have Sol, and we have here, that's Amaterasu. So Amaterasu and Sol both had um, kind of very dynamic brothers. And for Amaterasu, she, um, like, got so overwhelmed seeing, like, the war and the, the craziness and stuff. So some of you, like, I understand, we're out here seeing... Like, the police do crazy things. We're seeing, you know, there's, you know, all of these, I don't even want to voice some of the words, but attacks and, you know, just so much pain and hatred and bigotry that others are being in the world. That's like, how do we rid this? How do we um, handle it? And so Amaterasu got overwhelmed and she went and hid in the cave. And it took a lot. Like, people couldn't get her to go out. She was just so brokenhearted over the state of the world. And then finally, one of um, the other guys goddesses acting as the uh the, the sacred clown came and was like you know exposing herself and dancing very um funny usume and she um like tricked uh amaterasu into looking out of the cave and then they showed her herself in a mirror and she saw her beauty and her importance and the fact that she could still shed light on things in the world and so they're like your time is not done yet you still can enact change right? You still have things to do. You're still on the path. Yes, you are on the path and it's good that you are. You have to persist. Even though we have the Knight of Pentacles here that could be slow moving, you have the vision, you know, see beyond the current situations. You have to be able to do that. And I know in certain traditions, um, you know, there is the, the story that there are um, a select number of people in the world whose whole purpose is to hold the vision that the world can be a better vibration and to actively, you know, do that energy work, like actually do that energy work. And I feel like not only that, but you guys are the boots on the ground too. So you're, a lot of you do go to the front lines. A lot of you are out here, you know, truly, 
you know, in the trenches, you're helping children in need, you're, um, you know, supporting survivors, you're going to the marches and you're letting it be known, like, we're not going to have this pain and suffering. We're not going to allow bad things to happen anymore. Some of you, it's in your own um, family that you're making those changes. But for a lot of you, I do see that it is the, you know, very external. I see you guys, you know, really going with legalities and politics and stuff. Like we we're I'm going to make this change. Like we have to, we have to make changes and make the world better and safer. Um, because you truly believe there's a way to live in harmony, a, a true respectful, honoring harmony where you do see each other, you do see everyone's different colors, you do see, you know, all the individuals that you are, but there's room for everyone and there's respect. And so I really thank you for those of you who are out here actually caring and doing the work and you know, decolonizing and building up the world in a better way and things of that nature because I feel that you really, a lot of you are really doing that and you're tired of waiting, right? So there's that song, Waiting on the World to Change by John Mayer and I feel like you're like, no, like I'm not going to wait on the world to change. Look, look what's happened. Eons of people waiting. So something and a lot of you has reawakened or reawoken where you're like, no, it's time to stop um, being on the fence about things and actually go out and make the differences that are necessary both on the spiritual plane and on like this very real world plane and using your intuitive gifts and so i feel like um you know your ancestors that are coming through they even foresaw this some of them that were you know seers they might have also fought um you might be following in the footsteps of others who led civil rights movements, human rights movements, led their revolutions and rebellions and things. And so they are with you and they're letting you know that you can still keep that good heart. You can still keep that sweetness, even as you are truly, you know, fighting and making sacrifices and doing what you need to and to use your spiritual gifts at, in alignment with that. And there's absolutely like some of you have been feeling like, do I have to pick one or the other? And they're like, no, because here we see with elk he's very grounded very aware of what's physically going on um if we look there's red on the mountains behind him which could be that energy of like you know danger the need to be instinctual and pay attention but he has his antlers and antlers are a sign of like the the crown chakra and the third eye and higher realms and being spiritual so you have the ability to ground those energies and you know, and that's what this is, is bringing in the higher powers, the true emperor, the universal cosmic laws, and bringing those down into this place that is in chaos and crazy, right? Loco. Um, yes. And I feel like a lot of you, that disharmony you've been feeling within your spirits is starting, you're starting to be like, oh, that's what it is. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. This is, this is my path. And you're finding it and it's going to start making more and more sense and you are going to have oh look there's a cardinal right there so you guys do i always share cardinals messages when they come through this group your ancestors do literally come through as cardinals for you and maybe also that bird um some of you your ancestors had red hair or very pale blonde hair i'm seeing strawberry blonde hair um i'm seeing some dreads um, and locks, let's see, and I'm seeing very, very, very long, um, wavy or curly hair, so that's just, that just popped out to me if that helps, um, but yeah, a lot of you, you might, um, sorry, they, they interrupted with a different information, so we also see those flags, that's success, that's winning, so, um, winning, 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 and continuing and so if you know the checkered flag and they're showing it a lot now since um, rest in power and peace Nipsey Hussle um, died was killed um, but that was one of his marks was the marathon continues and he did a lot of community work and forward moving work and um, I, I never noticed that there's those flags right there you know telling you keep on going keep running you're gonna you you can help in this marathon that's what it is it is a tag team race you know, they did what they could in their time, your ancestors, and they're passing that baton. They're like, we're passing it, and you you grab it, and you keep on running. You keep advancing things. You keep thinking about the children and having compassion and um, 
you know, seeing people as, you know, family on the planet and, you know, doing what you need to, to, to make those changes and, and not just wait for someone else to do it because you bring a lot of light. You bring a lot of enlightenment when you allow yourself to change and progress. Some of you, you're like, man, this has shaken me to the core from some old stuff. So you guys are having ancestors that are showing up to let you know, yes, you're right change change with the times because that is the mark of a good ancestor and even now we have to prepare our minds for when we are older uh, you know a day older 10 years older however older that we will always stay um humble when the younger generations come and say hey we found something you did wrong we need you to help us rectify it because that will always happen it's this the cycle of nature it's the duty of the youth to rebel it's the duty of them to um, you know, find even more ways to be free and spiritual and loving. And so for those of you who have been like on that, you know, part where you're like, well, yeah, but family heritage, we had, you know, it wasn't good, but it's still that you have them stepping forward and saying, no, it's time to change. It is time to change. You don't have to, yeah, mummify and, and make the shrine you know, we in spirit now are encouraging you to change the dialogue of things that, you know, it's far outdated and it was wrong when we did it in our times kind of thing. So for those of you who needed that message, um, that's there because in their time, see how low this hawk is flying? They didn't have the foresight. They didn't have the self-awareness. Uh, they were very caught up in a very limited view. And now they have, you know, more understanding. They're getting more enlightened on the spirit side. So for those of you who are concerned about kind of the closed-minded um, ancestors or, you know, they didn't leave a good legacy and things like that for you, you guys are skyrocketing. You're really, as far as um, putting yourself through a crash course to make sure that you are going to be a truly empathetic and loving person and, you know, really back up your words, you know, um, like we say, don't just be an ally, be an accomplice, you know, go out there. No one's free if we aren't all free. And uh, again, I feel like there will be themes of this in your personal family and your nucleus that you create in the family you were born into and in the greater world at large. Um, also for a lot of you are readers and seers yourself, and this is going to be messages and medicine to pass on to those who come to your readings. And it might be very dynamic. Yes, yeah, so for those of you who are also readers, seers, um, you're conveying messages to others, you could be a healer in some capacity, but especially those of you who are getting messages, you um, are urged to start giving those intense messages to people. If you're seeing in their cards that they have prejudice or bigotry or that they're doing spiritual bypassing, that they, if you're seeing that in your cards for yourself or know that you need to be receiving those messages, baby, <laughs> baby magic is up now. go okay took them out of the glass bowl so they won't be so loud um yes so if you are getting those messages um or if you have been rejecting those messages it is time to receive them it is time to hold that capacity now at the same time it is important that you don't become the system and this is something i've been seeing a lot because of course this is what happens first the people of color were marginalized in the seer communities and the tarot communities and everything and, um, you know, uh, being ostracized or given the silent treatment, you know, when you speak up about, you know, the representation on the tarot decks or the dynamics or whatever in the group or just the issues of the world at large. Well, then once it starts becoming trendy um, and, pe you know, people who are not people of color start kind of capitalizing off of that and using it to be like, oh, aren't I such a good person? Now you have some people talking about it, but it's very much like, oh, pat on my back. I'm a good person. I'm discussing these things. Meanwhile, they're still only choosing maybe a couple token people of color to um, support and listen to their voices and ostracizing everyone else who might be too powerful or that they see as competition. And they're then they're, I'm, this is what I'm seeing and y'all know because you see. And then you see those same people um, once they get enough cred of, you know, supposedly being such a good ally, they're then leaving the gentrified cities they live in and going to um, you know, centers of black culture and all their Etsy shops are all black slang. They're ripping off our videos here <laughs> that we do of our culture, but not given support. And you 
using, you know, asking the community or the, you know, this country, whatever, to fund them as I'm, I'm such a good person. Look at the work I'm doing. See, I'm not racist. I'm not bigot, big, you know, bigoted. But instead of actually using their platform to increase everybody else's visibility that doesn't have it, they find a way as they go along and it gets corrupted and they go back into that same cycle of making it their way of making money, their way of doing and getting. So this, and this is something I'm going to talk about a lot. If you don't like it, you, then you probably have some part you need to decolonize and we all do. Okay. So if you think it's bad, think about the people of color, um, who have to decolonize themselves and realize the way that the system tries to make us hate ourselves. Okay. And how we have to fight that and fight our own, you know, programming that's been put into our minds so that we can reclaim ourselves and move forward in a helpful way. So you guys are on some real shit spiritually, what you're meant here to do, what your ancestors are trying to do um, with you. They're going to require a lot of you. I think you require a lot of yourself. This is in alignment with your spirit and your higher self and your desires. And it's going to be frustrating sometimes because you will desire to be a truly good person and to, you know, not have anything that is false or oppressive to other people's in any way. But then you're going to come up those moments, those day to day moments, those night of coin moments where it's like, shoot, but I like this person's music, but they don't follow this values. Man, I love that sandwich at that place, but they don't treat, you know, immigrants correctly. I'm sorry if that's very loud to you. She's playing with the witching runes again. Um, we'll see if she brings you guys any. Um, yes, so there's a lot, but it's like, it's in, it's good. It is good. So some of you have been struggling. Maybe you judge people who protest. Maybe you judge, um, Okay, we had another pause and I found one of the candles that had been on the ancestor altar and it wanted to be lit and look at that beautiful shine there. So this is, I think, literally just the example where they're like, yes, one of the matches flicked and kind of melted right there a little bit. So it's like, yes, sometimes you are playing with fire, but you got to play with fire to be the light you need to be and shed the light you need to be on the system. And look at, look at, look at that energy. You know, so the and it was the black cat candle matches that I found, which is that cat. That's that's lucky energy there. And then look what I look over and see, my black panther. Oh my, my black panther. Oh my gosh, y'all, y'all. Okay, so for those of you who needed that medicine to know, yes, they are talking to you. These are your ancestors. And the candle says creativity. It says, allow me to explore more dimensions, discover new thoughts, ideas, and emotions. So they want you to keep doing creative maneuvering. They also want you to still like create with yourself. Don't feel like you have to, as you're processing old pain, old traumas, you know, those spiritual DNA traumas, those physical DNA traumas, and PTSDs, as you're going forward, create with yourself. And I definitely do think the message for some of you is they are encouraging you to continue your lineage. So that is a very personal <laughs> debate. Sometimes when I do personal readings, ancestors are just pounding people like, you need to have a kid. Um, but this is, <laughs> has baby magic agrees. Um, but this is your message here to, you know, keep creating for the future, even when you're not sure there's going to be one. Keep seeing the earth as rejuvenating itself, seeing your peoples as, you know, flourishing and onward and onward and onward, okay? Some of you are not resting when you need to rest though, and that's something they also want you to do. Some of you aren't dancing and being joyous, and this is that light coming in and them telling you, you know, that sacred laughter, you know, do that. And people who go through oppression have the best humor ever. Like oppressed people's, um, they just have the best humor because you get through, like you get through. And I love that. I love that quality. Um, so this is like, use your humor, elevate yourself. You know, if you have to go watch stand up comedy, you know, don't take it so seriously that you can't enjoy life anymore. Give yourself some little escape routes of pleasure as well, because it's going to be an intense road. Okay, and some of you, like it says, you're going to have to take the that those hard messages where you, you don't have it right, and you're trying to help other people, and you're trying to be a good person, and you're going to have to find out when you are 
not in alignment with what those people that you're trying to help need. And you're going to have to receive that information and those tough lessons and messages. And you're going to have to swallow that down. So it's kind of like it's giving, the, giving me that image of like when you're in school and you're like, okay, yeah, I studied this test. I did subliminal YouTube videos. Like I'm going to ace this test. And then you get that test and you realize I don't know shit. <laughs> this is not what I thought this test was going to be, you know, and it doesn't matter because that's the test the teacher gave you. And that's just the way it came out. And so for some of you, that's what it's like. When you are talking with, um, you know, people that you are like, oh, I'm going to show up at this march and help this other group of people, um, you know, be free. And then they let you know, oh, wait, you're doing something incorrect or that was something disrespectful or that was a microaggression or something. And then you're mad and then you want to play the victim, right? And cry, cry mummy. <laughs> and this is the night of the night of swords who starts double, double, um, backtracking on what they thought they were crusading for right that gemini split mine double talking trying to get out of it and this is saying right then all the baby's crying um and this is saying no you can't close your eyes to justice you're fighting yourself that's what you're fighting so when you come up against those moments realize you are fighting yourself and to allow yourself to go through the pain of that the frustration the disappointment that we feel in ourselves when we realize damn like, I had a, a thought process that was harmful. It wasn't good. It wasn't heart-centered. Like, that hurts. It does. Like, and we all come to those moments. And your ancestors are saying, but you got to get past them. Otherwise, you might make the same mistakes as we did for the ones who were in the wrong in the past. Or you might just not get as far as you can, you know? And so they're giving you that advice for the ones who were doing the right thing in the right path. And a lot of you, you can tell with your history or, you know, maybe the demographic that you're in what side of the history your ancestors were on. Um, but now I think they're, it's on the spiritual sense, they're all trying to make it right and move forward, okay? So let's see your messages. The moment I begin to celebrate myself and focus on my successes is the moment I begin living. So you have to see all of this, this breaking down energy, this crumbling energy that you feel as successful because it is successful to break down everything that is not love. It is successful to remove everything that is harmful or bitter. That That's not security. That's not safety to stay in those places, right? Kind of like that safety match that lit and melted my, my little massage table here. But then after that, you know, I, I was a little more careful with the next one just in case. And we have this beautiful light, right? A little creative maneuvering. So that is when you can celebrate yourself. Um, some people get so worried about not, especially like if it's on social media and like people think that they're like this big spiritual person and then they have a person from, you know, an oppressed group say something to them and they get really mad, they get defensive. How dare you say that I'm not a good person in spiritual? That's not what we're saying. Look at it. They're agreeing. It's all flickering. They're, what they're saying is what you're doing right now ain't right. You know, you got to go back to lessons. You got to address that in yourself. And then when you do that, that is the success. That is the success moving forward. Then you celebrate yourself after you do all that hard work, all that heartbreaking, you know, because that, that is love. That is love. When we will say, damn i had it wrong like this hurts like a mother this is embarrassing as shit man damn that hurts it hurts so bad but you know what i'm gonna build it up i'm not going to let the tyranny and the hate i see outside be inside me because if we like let's say we smash the patriarchy everywhere else but inside we still hold those little ledges that we didn't want to give up because we you know we didn't want to lose what we perceived as a power play or whatever we wanted to hold that little bit of upper hand on each other if we don't let that go guess what when the patriarchy is nowhere outside or the evil is nowhere outside or whatever you want to call it um it's in you right so we can only heal the outside world if it's healed in us and vice versa so when i honor my feelings i find power in powerless situations um, so that's kind of what I was just talking about. It's about getting to the point that your emotions are not in a place of my defense, my defense, but they're in the place of what is most honoring and true in the situation. And then you will find power and it's an internal power. It's not a power that is something that you have to leverage on somebody else's life. You know, it's not a power that you have to leverage on um, practices that hurt the earth. 
it is a power of having control of yourself and having honorable feelings and being in sync with that. So I feel like a lot of you are really busting your ass to, to be a good person in that way. And this is your further encouragement and your ancestors coming like they came through for you. And I hope you feel that. I hope you feel empowered, um, you know, solidarity, all that good stuff. Keep fighting the good fight. Challenge it where you see it. This is letting you know that's that's warrior hearts challenge it speak up when you see somebody else who is coming from a place where they don't have a voice instead of clicking up with those and following and joining in to all those who are pretending to you know be activists but they're taking a spot that is shutting down the voice of an oppressed person support the people who don't have voices you know leverage your privilege we all have so many different ranks when it comes to bigotry racism um, colorism you want to hold this there you go <laughs> she was like, no. this one there you go <laughs> baby taking up the mantle yes um, so that is your reading. I hope you liked it. I hope you feel this amazing energy coming through. I thank you so much for caring and for coming here to do this hard work. And, you know, we support each other. I'll see you there on the front lines. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Now we're going to get to number three. You guys got some amazing ancestors so far. Yeah, don't they, baby? Alrighty. For those of you that chose the earring, ooh, there we have the candle lid from number two. And we have baby magic in the house. <laughs> Let's see what you got, number threes. So we have um, the lovers, Marasa. We have. Um, the Hermit Reverse. Oops. The Hermit Reverse. We have the Queen of Cups Reverse. We have the Ten of, um, the Ten of Wheel. Oh my gosh, I do that sometimes with the Majors. <laughs> the, t uh, the Wheel of, oh, I almost did it again. The Wheel of Fortune. Gee. Um, we have the Justice Reverse. The Justice. Oh my gosh. Um, the High Priestess. The Devil Reverse. We have Baal Buck, Beck. We have Brother and Sister Transformation. Releasing Anchor from the Past sets me free in the present. The Void. The Deer, which I love because you guys have double Deer message and energy, which is amazing. Vows. The High Priestess. So you got the High Priestess twice in Oracle form and in Tarot. And let's see, two more cards. <laughs> the Knight. And the Graveyard, Unnecessary Fear. Okay. This is, this is a cool reading and it's very cohesive. So I am seeing people who are waiting for their romantic partners to come in and this is what your ancestors are going to talk about or you're considering a divorce or you're waiting for things to get better in your current partnership after a time of difficulty. Now some of you absolutely have some very deep vows and soul contracts that are coming. We have it from the void. We have the Wheel of Fortune saying it is about time. We're hitting the timing of this relationship. Um, um, relationship timing here. Hold this one, baby. Is that too much? She's like, ooh, she's selenites a little high vibe for her. Yeah, she said, yeah, did you hear that? It's too, she, the selenites feeling a little too high vibe for her right now. Oh, sweet baby. Um, this is high vibe energy, actually, which is a perfect segue because I'm seeing like stuff is getting knocked out left or right. Some of you are like, what the hell is going on? All of a sudden, I'm single. I've been married for a long time. All this stuff hit the fan. We got a divorce. Like, I discovered that this person's not, not who I thought they were. What is going on? Um, some of you are suddenly wanting to be like, go sow your wild oats or something. You're not wanting to be in your marriage anymore. And you're just like, is there something wrong? with me like what is going on and it's because a lot of you had in the making a already pre-planned um relationship very intense succinct that's like hitting the the time frame right now the alarm's going off it's waking you up 
okay and you're starting to be like oh shoot this is not where I wanted to be romantically some of you did not you're not with the partner that you had wanted to be with or that you had signaled to be with all right we have the candle flickering here in agreement um yeah. so you're seeing this this night with the roses here be brave and honest you're feeling this energy coming into you and you guys are also extremely attuned i love that this high priestess has a candle you don't see that and yet here we are the candle wanted to be lit last uh last option number two and suddenly we have that and oh my gosh she has a heart on her on her little mantle right there which is also not a quality you usually see on the high priestess i freaking love it synchronicities and so we have two high priestess and we have the black cat oh my gosh shut the door look at what brand of candle of course as a witch that i had or of um matches okay okay do you hear it they're playing the rattle um it's not a rattle i think it's called a cistern but it's a magical instrument that a set Isis really loves to to ring in ceremony times. So you guys are right. You are not crazy. You are, there is this cosmic relationship coming through. However, the relationships that you thought were in place, um, unless you are truly in a committed relationship that is loving at this point, like you will know it. There's not going to be any questions. Like there's not going to be any bullshit in this situation. There's not going to be any heartbreak, but some of you have been stuck in cycles with, I guess what people would call car negative karmic partners. Um, you know, just people that maybe you chose them of your free will, or some of you were just meant you had it in your stars to go through a divorce. You just did because I don't think it was the suffering that was the point. I think you just had multiple soulmates. You wanted to experience and um people you know right now the society we're living in is like oh that's so bad this must be a bad thing it must hurt um but that's not how cosmically things are like sometimes we're just like yeah i got 10 badass soulmates and they're gonna be looking good like i love that incarnation suit you putting on yeah i'm gonna I'm marry you for a while <laughs> we gonna be married married <laughs> and so that's what it was like it for all of you it you know, it's it's not always, um, but what can happen, it's not always a bad thing, but what can happen is that when we don't let it go, when we know that it's past time, or if we're fighting to try to get somebody and get our claws into someone else who's already made different decisions, we start breaking our own hearts because we're trying to force energies that are not wanting to come together. Now, sometimes you can witch that shit and you can make it happen. And sometimes it's just like even the universe itself is like, no, pump the freaking brakes. That's not what we're wanting you to do. Release anger from the past and you can actually see in the present all this good shit that's supposed to be coming in. You know, that's why we let that little person come come and distract your relationship and scramble things up because you were miserable in that relationship anyway you didn't want it it wasn't the right thing at the root you know this you have a lot more pleasure to receive and to get involved in without the crazy toxic you know whatever kind of journey story whatever and we have some good good old juju bam over here like look at that look at that like a vow that's a, the, so serious it's the kind that a knight takes like that's intense right there right so i feel like there's so much more good coming in more more sexy time this is also about uh releasing the uh information or judgments that others have on what your sexual life can be all right so of course as always this is talking about consenting adult relationships um with adult consenting adults um but this is literally like festivals of um, uh, sexual pleasure and indulgences and knowing the difference. Now, some of you might have gotten a little overhand. This is about finding the, ba the boundaries with it, but not judgment. So this is saying, you know, if you've been to the point you've been terrified to like, you know, you're like, oh... Uh, maybe it's like even like smoking weed would help my health and even my doctor recommended it but I'm terrified I'm gonna go to hell or something or you know oh I'm afraid to have a drink um, and it's not because you are you know staying healthy and trying not to drink for um, like an alcoholic purpose it's just that you're you just have fears and stigmas in you or it's like oh I'm terrified of claiming my own body or finding pleasure with myself or you know so this card brings up and challenges that vibration of you know some of you are in i would call kind of like a false celibacy where you might be trying to say it's okay and you like it and it's spiritual but it's not 
you 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 it's time for you to have a healthier route with yourself and be accepting and open up yourself and that's going to help open up the path to your partner now i know that's not everybody's thing but for those who came to this reading it's saying to reevaluate that some of you might have really been going into cutting off intimacy in an extreme way now there's also the opposite where some of you have been extremely obsessed with pleasure at all cause causes and it's ruined some of your relationships whether that is through online or just through tons of partners like you're pushing it as far as you can push it and you might even be using the excuse of well i'm you know i'm free i'm spiritual i can do what i want and i've seen this even in like like activist groups that are kind of spiritual too where it's like oh well you know they start uh, interfering and breaking up families and stuff because they're saying well i don't believe in monogamy i think it's a construct and i just love that person and their soul so i can just go and do what i want and so they start like putting destruction around them and um you know that's not a, a harmonious healthy sexual energy right kinks are one thing right you can have a, a crazy kink and be on a healthy vibration and some people don't get that but you can also be doing pretending that something's a good relationship and a soul contract and all this and you're on some very you know mean-spirited destructive shit so this is telling you like release all that stuff just let it go and move on and because that at the time of that is over and the time of you kind of if you know that you've been kind of wrong but you've been kind of getting away with it like for instance if you're if you're doing that right now this is your ancestor saying, okay, we're about to get you caught up. <laughs> We've had enough of that. We're ready for you to move on and have healthy relationships. And we're going to start throwing down some major blockages and letting shit hit the fan. If you, if you keep disrespecting yourself or if you're disrespecting people who are in, you know, on, um, honorable partnerships, or even if you don't think it's honorable, you know, if you start really, if you start overstepping we're going to start letting things hit you, all right? Um, because they're like, this. The, that's old stuff. We're not about that anymore. It's time for you to have some really healthy relationship and throw all that negativity into that void. Send it out there, you know, to the where it can be recreated and, you know, disintegrated and recreated into good energy to bring down into the universe. We have deer here. This is about new paths, again, with the moccasins. Dear energy is always protective and gentle. There's a fierceness. If you've ever come face to face with a stag, which I have, they are, it's astounding. Oh my God. Um, I'll have to tell you guys in one of the chats some of my dear stories, but um, my different nature stories. But it's like, it's time to stop operating over fear and like, who am I going to have when I die and cradle to the grave and, um, you know, I want to be the one on that stone, Mr. and Mrs. or, you know, Mr. 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 Miss, they and they, um, whatever. I, I, you know, it's like this fear. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And it's like this tombstone is this anchor on your chest. And you're like, no, like let things let things flow and grow focus on who needs to be nurtured around you focus on being you know regal and honorable and um you know kind and loving and empowered in your own self and because there are for some of you people who you need to be considering some of you have been trampling over other people's marriages and stuff and you don't you're not caring about their children you're not caring about the effects that what you're doing could be doing to someone else right or you've had that experience and your children need your attention now and you just to focus on getting loved up and getting ready for this thing that's coming in now as soon as you can let this old stuff go so in here her brother doesn't listen to her he gets himself in trouble because he's drinking the stream in this magical forest gets himself caught up being a deer <laughs> but she doesn't hold it against him she doesn't sit there and say oh well i was so much more enlightened than you and this is so dumb and not a d la da da she just take takes care of them and they have a loving beautiful relationship and then of course you know the king comes and they end up going and they he admires how you know caring and loving and nurturing this person is and they end up getting married and you know happy endings and things happen and lessons are learned and in the end the brother gets freed to his natural form so this is about yeah being honorable being compassionate even when you're solo right because we have the energy of seven because um which can be a solitary learning lesson being wise you have the high priestess twice so it's very important and i think because you, you carry a big soul energy 
um, they're, they're going to put their foot down with you just kind of slinging energy wherever you want and kind of disrupting um, peoples and some of you have been kind of creating some bad karma for yourself or maybe you might be getting some backfire um, you know even if you've been actually doing magical working somebody might have uh, you know mirror spell sending that right back to you or like reversal reversal energy so they're just letting you know okay we've had your back we about done with that. <laughs> We're done being exhausted with that. We want to see your loving side. We want to see your nurturing side. We want to see that you care and that you're operating from that space and not this um, fear, not this bitterness, not this, I, you know, um, desire that's out of balance, but a desire that's being fulfilled and is active and is healthy. Um, but things are turning around. So those of you who have only had negative romantic experiences and you've just felt that, that energy of the void, it's like, you know, like, okay, like maybe you've been feeling lonely in the universe instead of feeling how magnificent it is to be such, um, in sync and connected to the universe. And that's going to start turning around and they have that Merkaba there, which is like a chariot that can move in all directions, all times, all spaces. Um, harness mystic powers yes so i feel like it's it's like it's here you have good relationship coming in you have pleasure you have um attraction and passion you have commitment you have someone who's very dedicated things coming in good fortune coming in and you know others to to, to nurture some of you might be having um young children um coming in and things of that nature so they're letting you know just just keep it legit now you know, be honest with yourself. Don't delude yourself because we have the Queen of Cups reversed and they're going to bring in some beautiful loving energy and really upgrade yourself, upgrade your sex life, upgrade your loving romantic um, life. And I do feel like this uh, information is kind of a sit down from a couple, um, a, like a, a, a relationship, a couple, maybe a married couple is what it feels like from your ancestors. Like you're getting a sit down and they're saying, look here. You don't have to do all that that you've been doing or get caught up in all that craziness spiritually, physically, you know, all of that in order to have a loving, honorable partner. And yes, it is possible because we did that. All right. We did that and we're going to help you out. So just keep your ear listening to your ancestor is like, yes, 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 yes. So keep your ear listening. All right. Take care of your, your pets. Take care of your children. Be respectful of other people's you know, the love that others or pe people are trying to grow. Even if you feel like, oh, well, you jumped my contract to go over and love someone else. You know what? If they're trying to love and they're doing it with their free will, either let them be or be happy for them. Let that anger go and go back to that cosmic <laughs> connection that you have with your other soulmates because there's a bigger and better soulmate connection that is coming through, all right? So I wish you a lot of love and happiness, a lot of healing, and let me know how you feel about this reading, um, and I will talk to you soon. <laughs> yeah. Is that on your finger? <laughs> now she's playing with my little uh, bottles for the herbs. All right, we're going to have one more. Oh, thank you, ancestors, for coming through. I appreciate it so much. They've been so great. All right, number four. We have those of you who chose the orange skull. We lit a candle um, sometime through number two. And this is a candle that was on an ancestor for ancestors and they reminded me of it. I actually stopped the video at one point and went over and I, it was in plain sight and it hasn't been in plain sight. So we got that lit for the ancestors um, who are coming through. So let's see what cards you got. We have the eight of swords. We have the um, hierophant reversed. We have the Ten of Swords reversed. Mm -hmm. We have the Ace of Swords. They're ready to talk. We have the Ten of Pent uh, ten the Ten of Pentacles reversed. The Ace of Pentacles. The Nine of Cups reversed. The King of Cups. The Two of Coins. The Star reversed. They get a lot of cards for this one. The Knight of Cups reversed. Yeah. Santiago de Compostela. 
the little match girl choice. I show up for myself and the world. Fenrir. And then we have this universal card that has the sun, moon, stars, and ocean on it. Oh, we still have a few more. The Night Women. The Arrow, which is surround yourself with protective energy. Mother Earth, feel loved and comforted. And the skulls, Skull of Flowers, creating through the ashes. And this candle is actually creativity. So what we got here, we have definitely, um, there's actually a lot of ancestor energy here. It almost feels like a whole crew stepping forward. I see uncles and cousins and I see um, there's like mother, grandmother figure and kind of father figure, grandfather figures that are here. So there's a lot. We have um, maybe a group of sisters or could even then like people who are like uh, aunts or family friends. So there's a whole bunch of people that are coming through. For you guys on this one but they are talking about a number of things um some of a lot of them are saying that um maybe you have been cut off from them maybe there was a, a break in the family and so you guys were not really raised knowing all of your ancestors maybe they were disowned for doing stuff that was like not cool or the side of the family that you are connected with were disowned from them I feel like a lot of them are acknowledging too like maybe they don't have like a headstone or a resting place um, and you don't really know where they're located at. Um, so, you know, that could be a concern that's there, but there definitely is the energy of them feeling like they haven't been able to connect to their generations and that, um, it's, it's a lot of work for them to connect and try not to be completely severed from you guys. And so they're very, um, excited to communicate. It's all right, my love. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, sweetheart. Okay, I am back. Baby Magic is um, asleep. It took her forever to go to sleep. I actually went and saw the whole Beyonce homecoming documentary film before she went to sleep. But she is resting now. And I feel like that was perfect timing. So this is a crazy thing. It's going to segue into your reading. But I had not meant to pay Netflix. And somehow my account paid itself. So I got this email like, oh, you paid for Netflix. Like you have. And I was like, what? Like, ugh, okay. And so I was literally like, I had been on Instagram. And um, when I saw the the email tick through and I was like man spirit why did that happen and my screen re reloaded on Instagram and it was like Beyonce on Netflix <laughs> and I was like well damn that's an answer like that's very specific and so <laughs> and so then right now when I was going to put baby magic to sleep and trying to get her wound down and everything um I went on and the on the screen there's you know Beyonce uh her film dropped today and it's very early in the morning right now so it just dropped and then I saw on Insta everyone's going you know crazy and stuff so I was like okay let me watch this because it's all about you know it's very like black power and there's quotes from Nina Simone who is a goddess and just a pioneer and from Maya Angelou and from Malcolm X and everybody and then just put into her work and the creativity which is what that candle says um of what she what she's doing and what she's putting out there and she used a platform that she is the first person the first black woman to be at Coachella which is like notorious for you know people at Coachella really appropriate <laughs> native culture all kinds of culture and stuff you know not everybody obviously but a, it, a lot of people right festival culture and her deciding to do it but to do the spin where she's for the people and so that's very um like number two that's kind of like something that people who chose num number two would do now this reading is the other side of that coin this reading is talking about and there's black smoke so that's there's a little bit of unrest from your ancestors there's, they're gonna you gotta stick with us okay some people <laughs> with the last reading there was some tough love and you know some people unsubscribe and stuff if you're here we are going to talk about white supremacy we're going to talk about um supporting marginalized communities we're going to talk about decolonizing ourselves all of that is love all of that should be included when we say love and light it should not be spiritual bypassing right so what am i getting to 
I, that's what I see them talking about here. They're talking about um, spiritual bypassing, whereas where we can use all of that, like, well, I'm a hippie child, spiritual, you know, and all of this to not address things that we actually need to address. Because what they're saying, see all that black smoke coming up? If you're doing a candle reading, that's, you know, there's some troubles. There's some troubles going on. So I don't feel like they're putting bad energy on you, but they have some tough me uh, messages, okay? So stay with me. We have arrow, um, surround yourself with protective energy. So you're okay, like you're protected, but let's get to it. They, they want to be very direct. They're also claiming responsibility, all right? So they are acknowledging some of your ancestors that um, some of them had a part in leaving the world as it is right now as a fucking mess, basically. Okay, we have the Ten of Swords reversed, like they didn't kill it, but they damn near did. We have the Hierophant reversed, they didn't handle it the way that, that it should be. The Eight of Swords reversed, there, there was fear. Some of them were literally in bondage, um, depending on what side of the, the fence your ancestors were on. The Ten of Pentacles reversed, you know, they also didn't have maybe a solid um, legacy or history, or they kind of used their, their legacy to see in a in a negative way um we have some good messages here too but this is a lot of what they're talking about and they're showing disillusionment here and wanting to be in an emotional state of content and wanting to be you know feeling success and spiritual woo -woo, but not wanting to go out i show up for myself and the world okay so this is something they want to talk about you know it's it's good to want to be loved and comforted but what are you creating through the ashes okay now this card oh shoot i left the book out i, I was going to actually show you so you knew i wasn't just making this up but you guys should trust me if you're here doing readings you should you know, that's what we got to do only get readings from people that you trust so you must trust that vibe and you're here to receive this message because we're upgrading spiritually constantly and we can handle it okay so friend rear literally says um talks about you have um some like uh like a hatred and bigotry it, it warns to stop looking down on other people and it warns to like because they're different because you're prejudging them and because you need to feel successful by others being underneath so basically it's blatantly blatantly and there's a smoke again um addressing privilege when we're in a place of privilege and when we are um you know and and so we just have to take a minute and sit with ourselves and see where this you know where where is this within us there's good energy here too so obviously this is not saying hopeless case this is saying time to decolonize time to shake some stuff up again they're they're taking that responsibility that you know we're responsible from for some of this programming some of these patterns some of this stuff that led to um these issues being in the world and led to that programming within you that needs to be shaken out right now but they're trying to hit the mark and make sure that they correct things now as they have healed and understand things from the spiritual realm okay because this card the matchstick girl is about a poor child who is um made to you know live a hard life she has to you know oh she has to work hard and prove herself and earn what she gets and she ends up freezing to death like this is real y'all this is a this is a serious message okay this is like my great children being held in cages here in our free country right this is um i'm in the u.s for those of you who are worldwide this is this is that kind of stuff and they're saying this is not the time and you know what she did all she had was a little book of matches that how funny that i went and got that book of matches that she lit and in those matches she saw the flame of her ancestors and the message and that's what kept her warm as she transitioned and so this is saying like shit is real out here in this world we have to show up for the world we cannot just sit in the comfort of woo woo spirituality and you know sit under false teachers because it's easy like if you don't like this message you can unsubscribe click dislike and go and find people who are gonna blow the air up blow the smoke <laughs> up your bum right you really can and this is saying no there's there's bigger and better this is talking about the cycles of the universe the the time frames and this has words like destiny and harmony like it's possible 
right? We have to think of the, the whole repercussions of everything. Um, there's This is talking about like the, the Milky Way and the stars. And their advice here, right here next to the people in need, is we have the card of night women. And this is the Italian witchery where they would dress and go and um, the flower crown represented something. It wasn't just appropriation, weirdness. <laughs> I'm going to wear a, a flower crown with whatever else mixture of whatever else I want to um, claim and take from other cultures and go to a festival. The flower crown in Italian witchery was something that was put on as the witchers, the witches, the night women went around and healed the community at night. You know, so this is about going back to your roots, to the part where beyond even the damaged part, beyond even the parts of the lineage that were, um, you know, contributing to negative cycles to where you find that part where you guys were strong and where you had, um, you know, healing and where you were in your own power um, in a good way. Because when we are, when we can be fully truthful with ourselves and fully heal is when we can show up for others. And until we get to that point, um, that's why I always tell people, and I think sometimes people get mad because yes, I'm against like appropriation, colonizing, gentrifying shit. That's not okay. But people get mad sometimes and I'm like, no, like when I, if I'm helping train them at, on, with witching questions and I'm like, no, I'm not even talking from that point of view, even just advice as witch to witch, connecting to your lineage is always going to be the strongest magic. Connecting to the uh, like the earth of your your land where your people originate from is always going to be the strongest. So even in a practical sense, practical magic that is powerful, right? It's more powerful than utilizing another vein of someone else's stuff, right? Because that that's your lineage. That it's 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 so strong. I can't explain how strong that is and how significant. And so they're saying you do have, you know, um, rich roots. You might have, I have certain lines of my lineage on the, um, I have German in my family that the, the ancestors that are closer, they don't, uh, listen, I have to go back, you know, like seventh generations and more. The ones who are closer, they were all like Mennonites and stuff. So they're just like, okay, cool. Like they'll acknowledge me. They're not really interested in anything, any of this kind of stuff, right? They, that, that kind of, they kind of have that same energy as in life. Like, oh, we're neutral. We stick to our own things and we we're still in our, afterworld matrix of our beliefs kind of thing but if i go further back right which is funny because you got the viking oracle here to um the lands there and the uh, and our ancestors there they come through for me and it's a whole different it's back like you know back with the pagan beliefs and that they show up for me right and uh, i mean in like a physical way where they've affected things around and stuff so there you you know don't lose hope there is um other ancestors beyond just the ones that you know that might have been very damaging and also um the ones who have are they're trying to own up they're trying to fix things but they're like hey kid we kind of need you to help us fix these things because if you continue our negative patterns or if you are think you're being acting enlightened and you're actually not you're just kind of being just enough to delude yourself and but not fully go out and um be like a fully re realized spiritual person and actually do healing and stuff, then, you know, it's kind of, it's still missing the mark, which is still contributing to the cycle, right? Because, you know, what, what is said, it's not just the people who are like the evildoers, but the bystanders, right? Or the naysayers, the people who, and this is about, so this is about like paying attention to microaggressions, right? Microaggressions are where, um, something isn't necessarily like calling someone a racial slur, but it is cutting away at their voice, their platform, their believability, um, slowly like using kind of cold shoulder methods to isolate and stuff. So it's not segregation, but it's the fact that you will click on somebody who is talking in black voice, who's not black and watch their reading, but you won't go and support black readers, right? For example, for real life example, what I just saw, right? <laughs> um, it's stuff like that. And so this is about tearing down kind of those false, um, um, false credentials that privilege is giving and looking at the real in the face, even though it hurts, even though it makes you feel like you're bleeding out, you know, but it's like, have a real bleeding heart, not a heart that's like, oh, I want to change the world. And I did some, you know, I did a meditation for it and yay, I connect with healers who make me feel good and never question me. Or, you know, do like a, we do a shadow work where it's only limited and no one who makes us have to question, 
you know, our privilege or our actions or, you know, ho you know, without accountability, basically. If you're staying in this bubble without any true accountability, if you feel the need, like if you catch yourself doing things where you will shut down one person and want to push away from them when they're right about something and run to a group that's like you to get away um, with, you know, doing, continuing that pattern, that's that's not healthy right and this is even in romantic relationships that balance some of you that's why there's been an issue in romantic relationships and then you can't get out of a pattern because you're feeling like well i'm the enlightened one but in reality you're doing some methods where you are running away from yourself and you're not showing up for yourself and your partner okay again this is love you know they're they're having this conversation with you because they know that you can do the work because they have this belief in you and you, it's in your stars it's in your destiny you have the ability to be a protector to be a healer to be a nurturer for others you have the ability to be able to look at that tough scary shit in life and make a difference and make a change right so you're kind of just behind the steps of what the people in number two they're already breaking their heads on it you know and fighting through it and it is it's work it's a hard fight, but you know what? I have the book right here and I didn't even see it. So let me show you the book. 26. Oh, that's right. Because then I pulled a card to hold the place of Fenrir and it ended up also having meaning. So 24. Um, we'll also read that. So Fenrir, there is power in endings. Let go of your hatred. Belittling others to make yourself feel superior is never wise. Do not automatically fear those whom you may not fully understand. First impressions are not always correct, which we talked about. <laughs> and that's so funny because the last reading I did was first impressions and I think some people were upset um, and like, you know, clicked off my channel. But I was like, that's, you know, we, get, we check in with how others um, feel we are showing up so we can reevaluate if that's, you know, if we can do something about it, if we don't like that energy. Um, and sometimes, like in this case, we do have to actually do some work behind it as well. So, and we all have these times where we have to do that, um, but at the same time, this is kind of like get out of that mode where you have to be flattered, where you have to make excuses, where you get defensive, where you go into fragility and guilting tactics and, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff instead of just accepting like, yes, I need to knock the shit off. I need to be real. I need to be authentic i need to look at the the smaller finer details it's virgo moon right now like those finer details about how i am not showing up for the world or the areas where i am allowing bigotry or misogyny or racism or whatever it is to um to still exist and kind of fester and things like that so you also got a the Ophila? Ophila? Is that how I say it on this one? Okay, okay, uh, yeah, Ophala is also what it's called. I thought that was different than what. So this is talking about where, like, equilibrium, where things stay as they are. Um, we are rich if we have our family, our friends, and our health. Ancestral energy becomes important. A gift of inheritance may be forthcoming. But in this case, it's very ironic because that's what we're talking about is when, oh, well, I'm at this equilibrium. This feels okay for me. Right. And again, you inherited that from your ancestors. So you don't want to rock the boat because we're putting that message with the friend friend rear. So it's like, yes, like you are happy and thriving, as it said, if you have your health and your family and your provisions. So we don't need to maintain systems that make it harder for the sisters and brothers of the world and the, the folks of the world, all of us together, um, siblings of the world. Let's use that um, to 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 truly you know be ourselves and have that that protection and respect of being ourselves without you know theft and murder and abuse but also you know if we have that then we can join in together right because that's how we get community so if we say we want community but then we ostracize others and we don't want to work um on certain concerns unless we're the one saying it or unless someone who looks like us is the one that's saying it and we don't want to truly repair things um then we're never going to have that beautiful world and utopia that we want um so this is saying you know if we reverse this energy reversals can always be um th so this is the thing about reversals if you have a reversal that means you have the energy of that full potential both negative and positive 
of that card in your life. So if it's reversed, you just have to work to flip it because you already have hope. And right now it's kind of a hope in a state of despair because we have the Nine of Cups too. These are both wishing cards. So it's like make sure that your wishes and what you're trying to conquer and do in the world are, again, not just bypassing kind of the dying children, those who are being hurting and depressed, like it said in this one with Fenrir, those that you um, are judging and stereotyping and things of that nature. So you will still have space to feel loved and, uh, and comforted. We have the earth here. We have the moon, the stars, the, the universe. It's like we should all feel at home in those dynamics. Um, yes. And for those of you who are coming from the other side, you're like, okay, but <laughs> you know, I'm getting this. First of all, even if, if you're saying like, I am a minority and I got, I picked this reading well, like for instance, look at me. I benefit from colorism. I benefit from being cisgender, right? So I identify with the biology of the gender of the biology of the body I was born into from what society says, right? So um, we can always look at ways that we have privilege and leverage them. I've literally turned down gigs in Hollywood because they were trying to pull me into it and saying, oh, like describing what they needed as a black woman. And it was describing a totally different kind of sister. And they were disrespectful and pulling me literally because I was light skinned and, and mixed race and curly hair. And I was like, oh no, like sis right here. Like she's literally pulled her up and was like, put, put the spotlight on her. Like she's fine. She's going to nail it. She's perfect. She's gorgeous. And just talked her up. Like we can always afford to take a step back for a minute to put forward someone else who is being cut off, who is being overshadowed, who, and that's, you know, so even if, um, we are going through our own struggles, we never need to use that as an excuse to get over on each other. And so some of us have to remember that, right? This is a little check-in. In what, in what ways, um, down to the bone, each and every one of us, you know, down to the cores of our spirit, can we make sure that we're not contributing to this false system that's not helping any of us, right? And really, really check in with that. Now, this card, now, these are beautiful cards of hope, though. So let's pull all these in, right? Pull all these in. We've got protection. We have the ability to be a healer. Um, we have the, the moon and stars and the cycles coming in. So also, this is saying, okay, we, we have this talk now. Now you have to let yourself... Um, go through the cycles and kind of let the tables turn go through the dark side of the moon figure it out and then allow yourself to rebirth and have the patience to go through those those birthing pains that it's going to take okay um here the the energy of this is the higher font it's like literally pulling all of that out of your head it's almost the ten of swords like it it feels like it's the breaking point we talked about that in number two like it is painful to truly evaluate ourselves for healing in this world and make sure that we are at the level we want to be and not just using kind of a spiritual um, uh, hoodwinking or, you know, sleight of hand to hide behind, right? Okay, I'm Pisces. I can read through those energies, right? You can tell the difference if it's just using that, playing the martyr, or if it's really real and it matters when we're at this level and this means that your spirit cares and your ancestors care that you came to this reading because if you just really didn't care and you were going to keep get you know getting over on people misusing people you wouldn't even be here right so something in your spirit is like we can do it better we can find more ways to not take advantage of um, those who, you know, are easily misused. We can find more ways to show up and to be dynamic, to be more aligned with ourselves, to reclaim ourselves and thus help reclaim others and protect this earth and protect even, you know, even the stars, the whole solar system, our planet, you know, affects, it's just such a trickle effect, right? How we treat each other reflects how we treat the planet. And that reflects how this planet is going to affect the rest of the solar system and on and on. So um, just remembering that. Now, this is especially um, an acknowledgement if you or any of your ancestors have the name Destiny. Uh, what were the names? Destiny, Dawn, Harmony, Hope, Orion, and there was one more. Um, hmm, it's slipping my mind at the moment, so it must not be that I'm supposed to say it. But those were names specifically mentioned in these cards. Also, Diana. Um, yes. So 
so that's just an extra tidbit if anybody um, relates to that. So uh, with this, I feel like you, you know, be encouraged. You are protected. Your ancestors love you enough that they wanted to give that tough talk. And now it's getting a little calmer. <laughs> the smoke coming up from the candle. And it didn't do that for the other ones at all. Um, so, but create through that ash and smoke. Make a new world. You know, re just reevaluate that you're coming from your authentic roots. Find the balance with that. And you, the only way you're going to know is if you listen to the other peoples and groups that you're interacting with. Truly let them have their platform and their voice completely, you know, as a true equal, as a true accomplice, as we say. And, that, and that's that, right? Just like if you are a woman, you want men to, to truly just let you be a full equal, not pretend and then misuse you and then go make an Etsy shop utilizing <laughs> what you taught them about as a woman and appropriate, right? I feel like people understand it better quite often if I put it in terms of like, feminists and like misogynists versus if I put it in terms of race then people get very upset and they like make excuses of why it's okay to like keep appropriating and stuff so that could be a tool for some of you if you go into that space and you're getting like in the tarot community and stuff a lot of people who do start talking about allyship and about these causes they still go and like gentrify like they feel like that gives them the excuse to go gentrify and move to an area with marginalized communities and start doing the magics of those communities and start getting patreons for being a good activist all at the same time which is crazy um so just think about okay yes you may be able to, you can totally get away with that there's tons of disillusioned spiritually bypassing community and networking that will allow that for you you will make you will make money because that's how the false system works right it pays money off the price of people's backs we see what this is someone work in the field so but there's that rainbow of hope that should be there so we got to turn all these hope cards upwards so you know think about that and you can think it think of it in terms of okay if me as a feminist if i had a man doing this to me and saying oh but it's okay you know you don't need rep uh, reparations I can still speak for you a little bit it's okay if I get a ton of money off of the ideas I got from you because I'm saying I'm a feminist and I'm a good spiritual person would that fly for you <laughs> I think not so you can kind of use that to check with yourself a little bit um, as you're trying to learn and grow um, that might help some people let's see it's, yeah, it's very important to let voices be heard also within your own family as well. Some people in your family have been trying to grow and you haven't been letting them, you know, maybe because you lost hope in them. Okay. Um, some of them had addictions. I know these readings have gone long, but hey, the message is coming through and I'm willing to read them for you. So hopefully people care enough to listen and sit with the whole message with their ancestors. But if it's for them, they will. Um, so it's asking to, yeah, have more patience and compassion with that. With, I definitely see people who have made mistakes in their past and had trouble with, um, addictions and stuff like that, that may be in your family or community that instead of getting help, they're getting judgment and ostracism. Um, and so it's saying you, you you know, think, think about that. How would you feel if you were in that situation? Or maybe not even that. Maybe that's hard. Um, it might be hard to put yourself in a truly empathetic state with people at this point right now in your journey. Um, so it's just saying, just do it. I think that's actually the message. Even when you can't be empathetic because your logical mind keeps excusing why it's okay for you not to have to care about that person or why you, um, the, the distant uh, love and light um, suffices when it doesn't. Um, just do the work anyways, you know, just do the work as if you do have empathy and care and pretty soon it will start connecting more and more and the light bulbs will start going off at a deeper level and a more real level and you'll start connecting on people in that way that you've always truly wanted to and you'll feel so much more authentic and that love that you hold inside of yourself that is tapping out sometimes and getting bitter sometimes it will have a place to flow and grow um and you'll see just how much that you know there's enough for all of us to have that goes around so i think that's all the messages i'm getting for now from this one um i hope that 
you know, that you were able to receive that mess medicine. I am thankful for your ancestors for the growth that they are doing on the other side of things. And I'm very grateful for those of you who heard this message and received it because I know it's not easy. It's very hard to work on ourselves at this kind of level. But, you know, that's why we're going to stick together on this channel and be community with each other and truly work on this stuff and support each other in a good way, all right? So please comment down below if you feel comfortable on, you know, how this reading went for you and like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will talk to you soon.